home building contracts not going ahead. So that's obviously a big hot topic at the moment. Back end, we're like September 23, October 23 at the moment. What are you seeing at the moment when you talk to builders about that? Yeah, uh, it's both guys, well, most of the time well, I'm talking to a lot of builders every day. So they, um, there is consistency there, an increase of projects that they thought would be going through and then fall over at the final hour. This podcast is going to be about how to increase confidence in your market. Now, obviously, there are things that are like out of your control and things that are in your control. We're going to dive a little bit into that. Obviously, there are contracts falling over where there's literally just no money, you know? Yeah. How does that How does that normally work? Well, that would be typically the someone has a, let's say they're getting a loan, then the bank approves them for a certain amount. You know, it takes six months of planning and, and approvals and that and in that time rates go up they can borrow less now that they could do 1.2 mil project now they only have access to less they can only do a 900k project and you just can't take enough out of that that build to make it viable yeah and so it just there is falls. a there is a podcast that we recorded recently with paul and chris from gentrify in melbourne where yeah. they spoke about value value um, management value management price management yeah so what we'll do is we'll probably put we'll link that in the podcast below after this podcast, podcast go watch that that's you know potentially a solution for builders that they can do yeah. i think one thing we want to focus on in this podcast today is that lack of confidence when it comes to people that have money people that want to build they want to renovate they want to extend they've got the money but the thing that is holding them back is the lack of confidence they have in the builder Mm. um, and the current market yeah i think that's really important to maybe distinguish before we go ahead is uh there's no point i mean yeah it is unfortunate for the builders that have been working for a long time on a project and then final hour it drops out because of finance uh this podcast is not necessarily dealing with that that's more of a, a finance issue. Uh, this is more to go, well, you need to fill your pipeline with more people who have money, um, where they're not relying so much on the banks and, and an increased interest. I was talking to a builder yesterday and he's like, the kind of caliber that I play with, when the interest goes up, my clients make more, make more money. So it doesn't affect them. Right, that's so interesting. that's one way to look at maybe... Do you know how that builder got to that stage? Funny enough, this is... So this... Is a, I can't wait to have him on board and do a podcast with him. Because you look at the, it just it debunks any false belief that any builder has ever had in terms of, oh, I can't do that, or I can't, you know. And you, I'll talk to guys who've been, have a long career and they have that mental block on doing certain level of projects, or this guy has only been operating for three years. Right. Was, came from an entirely different industry, nothing to do with building, and was like, this is really, this is what I feel I'm, I'm called to go and do. And so he, yeah, he now runs five teams um, and they're doing some pretty high-end stuff. That's excellent. Yeah. And to me, that that sounds very much like our topic three today. Mm. So I'm, I'm excited to jump into topic three. I think I'm most excited about that because yeah. you and I both value topic three. So, um, mm. but let's... Oh, one thing I didn't add is back to what I was saying earlier, we're talking about people who have the money and can do the projects. Yeah. We're focusing on that. And it's important to focus on that rather than focusing on, well, what about the clients that, you know, the money, that, uh, they finance is not there and it drops out. Well, that's where it comes to, what does your pipeline look like? Yeah. And you need to be overbooking the pipeline. So your prelim, let's say those prospects sitting in your prelim phase and prior need to be more than what you can actually build for. And yeah. that's just about being transparent saying, First come, first serve. Yeah, and I mean, for anyone that follows like Grant Cardone, he always talks about you can't just rely on one thing, Yeah. right? If you have one you know, prospective client in your pipeline and you're putting all your bets on that, that's, you know, that's scary. Definitely. So you've got to do everything you can to you know, build your pipeline, build that confidence in your pipeline. Yeah. And for anyone, like you, you always talk about builders because you always tell me this, you, you go... Like some builders, you know, come to us and they go, yeah, I'm good for the next two years. Yeah. I'm booked out. But I'm like, you know, what, what are you doing now for the future? And then how are you building confidence in that current pipeline? Yeah, how are you building more security into that two-year yeah. pipeline? 100%. I mean, the last, the last few months, the last year yeah. is proof of that because 
a lot of these builders thought they were booked out for two years or whatever. Mm. Mm. And they're like, so true. I don't need to build confidence or I don't need to do marketing. I don't, way. yeah, it's all good. I can just focus on doing the jobs, doing the work yeah. and it'll work out. And then now all of a sudden the interest rates and all that stuff, yeah. people yeah. they thought were completely committed, yeah. gone. Yeah. So and I think, I mean, just coming back to that, that prison phase is so important. Um, I know a guy um, who helps a lot of builders out there, Dwayne Pierce talks about that pack process and, and acting as a consultant in that prelim phase. Um, that's and that's what, what Paul was talking about in that other podcast about value managing and and, you know, and price managing really through the design phase, uh, which gives the builder way more control of the final price and then the buildability of it and the outcome. Yeah, cool. Okay, well let's jump in. Like there's let's three topics. It. Yeah, we're going to keep it short and succinct. But if there's something good, we'll go. So I don't mind. I don't mind this thing being three hours, um, but we'll try and keep it uh, sm- uh, short for you guys. So number one is showing an ongoing presence. Uh, this is massive, and we've got a few ways on how you can actually do that and the way you should go about that. But just a quick little story. Uh, I engaged a bias agent recently, mm. and um, he's pretty well known on the Gold Coast. Um, he's he does excellent work. Uh, sorry, excellent marketing. His marketing is on point. I've spoken to him personally. He loves marketing. We had him on the podcast. We'll share the link in the podcast. However, one thing that I, you know, I put myself in the client's shoe because I, I was literally the client in this case. Mm. Um, you know, I had problems. I had pain points. You know, I've got an 18-month-old baby. It's time to go to a bigger house. Yeah. All right. And you run the business. Yeah, run the business and all that stuff. I was browsing real estate every single day, every single morning when I wake up 3.45 before I go for a ride. (laughs) I'll refresh real estate and check out everything for like the last year. And then just, you know, nothing. The the stuff that came up, there were heaps of people that wanted it. So we just kept losing out. And I, I just got sick of it. I'm like, look, to be honest, where's my value? How do I create value? It's, it's this business. Yeah. It's having a bigger impact on the building industry with builders. Let's you know make our product better and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, no, I've got to get this bias agent. But going through this bias agent process, he, this guy instilled confidence in me all around. So mm. um, this, he showed that there's this ongoing presence. Mm. And what I mean by that is like his organic social media was on point. So when I go to his feeds, he's got stuff happening the whole time yeah showing and good wins. quality and it's edu- yeah, wins are important which we'll touch more in a sec um, but it was highly educational yeah exactly he's got i mean he's got podcasts and he's been invited on other people's podcasts which builds authority yeah 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 so that that there like it instilled confidence with me and he shows this ongoing presence so from the time i kind of like started talking to him and i actually asked him when we finished recording here in the studio the last podcast i'm like mate i need your help how do, how do we get started he's like mate just reach out i'm like well i'm reaching out right now yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. anyway so from that point to us signing up with him to us going unconditional with our home he's showing a presence mm. yeah and they're even helping us like post sale mm. kind of thing right so and, a, and during i mean it was mate, it was really cool to to because as you were going through his process and he was building confidence in you you know you as the client were but then also as a business owner and i guess you know when it comes to strategy learning from that absorbing from that and seeing how we can apply it here yeah exactly uh, and share that with our builders and it was cool also when you were sharing with me the confidence that he was building it wasn't like oh you're on board it's a done deal he continued to build confidence yeah and set expectations yeah regularly and continually until yeah. it went unconditional and after yeah and after and even now and yet yeah, i don't think i mentioned his name matt Sharma from the Sharma group so it's it, that's been massive so i think one key takeaway that i would love for builders to take away from this uh, there's two key points is like you've got to have that show that ongoing presence mm-hmm. okay you've got to show that your business is alive when people do research on you okay so you might have some ads running or whatever you get there you know you, they become a lead you they will go do research and they'll do daily research to see what's update what what are the updates so you've got to update people uh, uh, you know along that whole process mm. um but the second key takeaway i got from it that i would highly suggest builders to look at is if you're a client or a customer of something have a look and ask yourself the question 
do these people instill confidence me in me? Yes or no? Mm. If yes, what are they doing to instill that confidence? Are there things there that I could borrow and implement in my business? Yeah. If it's they don't instill confidence, what would you have liked to build that confidence? So if you, if you don't have any confidence and you're like, okay, cool. Let's imagine I had heaps of confidence mm. in this mm. business. What should they have done in that place? Yeah. The reason why I say this is because it's, it's a lot easier because you're, you've removed yourself from your business. It's hard to see from your own business. Just had a huge epiphany while you are mentioning that. So um, last night we decided we're going to get a puppy. Oh, goodness. <laughs> and I know you, you guys said don't. But By I, the way, I, disclaimer, guys, I have two dogs. I love dogs. Yeah. I've been trying to get JP and my sister to, to get a dog for years now. Yeah, yeah. So now I'm finally looking like I'm entering that space. Um, and disclaimer... I haven't been a fan of dogs, but I promised my wife, your little sister, uh, you know, seven years ago that when we get married, we're getting a dog. So seven years later, I have to hold to that. Uh, and a lot of reluctancy, a lot of fear, unknown. It's the unknown. Oh, it should be. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, reached out to them last night and said, let's do this. We like this puppy that you've been putting up on your socials and asked a few more questions and said, yeah, we'd like to adopt it. Uh, paid deposit this morning and they sent through straight away, or even last night, once we said, we'd like to go ahead. And they sent, th- sent through here, bank details, X, Y, Z. Whole email full of information. Um, there to build confidence in yeah. my decision. Yeah. And to know that they're helping me not just to get the puppy and bye-bye, but, um, and I didn't even, I said to Carly this morning, I didn't even articulate it or think about it, but that's exactly what I wanted. And here, so that's a great example of someone who knows so what their audience. Uh, all sorts of information on what, what sort of crate to buy, what sort of you know pet food, how to start. Um, these guys are specialists in uh, groodles, um, and so how to specifically with groodles train them. How to because one of the biggest frustrations when it comes to and why people rehome them early on is you know, they're not potty trained, they're not cage trained. And so they've got those things, how to, from day one, start doing that. So yeah, you have cool. success straight away. So that they, they're they helping their client with the success on from that. But That's it's good. instant confidence straight away. So that was... Yeah. yeah just, so, cool. That leads us into topic number two. That's a great story because topic number two is confidence building assets and machine. So I'll just repeat that again. It's a mouthful. So confidence building assets and machine. So yeah. the machine part means some way or process or system Mm. to either automate or manually communicate assets that you have that builds confidence and that's exactly what that lady did right so when when you uh, did a particular action like yes let's go ahead where do we pay deposit like there's the action that's the trigger Mm -hmm. What what's what did they she send you she sent you some sort of information and any potential objection that i would have had was dealt with by educating me and, right. and affirming me that this is the right decision and this is how you're going to get wins from it. That's good. I love that. So yeah, builders can do this. We do this. Uh, we've been a fan yeah. of this for ages. We're always looking for better ways of doing it. So even this week, we've implemented new ways of doing mm-hmm. this to instill that confidence yeah. and build that into our machine. But what you want to think about is um, it's all along, among, like along the spectrum. So we just spoke about showing your ongoing presence. So yeah. this is particularly for people that, you know, they might be just watching you at the moment. You don't even know about them. Mm-hmm. Topic one. Yeah. Topic two, this is kind of like where they become a lead mm-hmm. to where they sign up as a client yeah. and beyond um, to have assets in place to keep building that confidence. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, are there a few examples that yeah, we should give people? Plenty of examples. My head's going crazy. Um, uh, one example that just came to mind when you were saying that was uh, one of our builders, he, sa- he has a, you know, a library of case studies and he saves, and there's one there that he hasn't published, um, and he saves it to send to someone or show in person when they've decided to go ahead right. with him. So like, or, or at that, maybe at the point of like, I really like what I'm seeing, I'm, we would really like to go ahead, but before it's actually signed and they've signed prelim or something, he'll show them this case study. It's a really Good. powerful case study we created. And he said he hasn't never, he's never not one with it. So That's it really awesome. just builds that last 20% of confidence to get them to, to yeah, sign good. on the dotted line. That's good. That's one example. Yeah, cool. I mean, I might rattle off a few quick yeah, examples. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so your business, your overview story to you know yeah. introduce your team, your company, the type of projects you do to really ins- create that emotional connection. Second one, you just mentioned it, case study stories, uh, create that instant validation, um, further that emotional bond, that emotional connection people have yeah. and go, this is the builder for me. Yeah. Now you've got them on the emotional side with those two videos. The third one you want to give them is some sort of capability. You want to show them that you're capable, mm. especially in 2023, moving into 2024. Yeah. You want to show... What's your financial backing, right? Where's your insurance at? What's the last 12 months of projects? What does your pipeline look mm-hmm. like the next six to 12 months, right? What projects are happening right yeah. here, right now? Essentially, you want to be showing them wins. And, and because, yeah. you know, wins breed more wins. Yeah. So that probably, they, that they probably goes that. to like a multi-project story. Yeah, great example. So for those who, who um, most of, say, non-clients listen to this might not even know what a multi-project story is yeah and that's where we'll spend the morning with one of our builders and go and visit several projects yeah and have them tell a bit of a story and we have a specific questions and how we curate that story it's on got each to get, project it's got to get communicated properly Big i see time. so many builders getting like a videographer or something to just do some drone shots and stuff of um construction visuals to some music yeah that looks cool well they, talk, other about, they talk about the this is the big thing um often we see is that when they talk about the aesthetics or let's say the engineering the product the product that's cool but it's cool for other builders yes you know and and i think sometimes builders forget that they go well this is really fascinating we're putting so much effort into this you know like the classic oh we build the best quality when your clients can't even appreciate that that level of quality for them it's about the service and the journey yeah so it's about communicating when you're talking about that build whatever stage it's at always like we talk about well, why is that important to yeah. communicate that to the client and what is that what value does that provide to that's them? it you've got to remember like you as a builder you as a business biz video as a business match drama as a business that i just explained before we're all just vehicles mm. and we're like a vehicle that stops and we pick up a person that is at point a and they want to go to point b yeah. point a being for builders like small home old outdated they might want to renovate yeah to point B, which is the desire, beautiful home, blah, 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 all those things. Yeah. We're all just vehicles. And a great example of this is we walked through a project that was about to get finished, a new home with one of our builder clients. It wasn't his, his build, right? I don't know if you remember this. Mm. And what he did was he kept pointing out all the mistakes mm. and I didn't even see it. Yeah. So in his mind, it was like, this thing is it not quality. Like- yeah. In my mind, I was like, wow, this is quality. Yeah. So that shows you that, yes, quality is so important. Like, mm. this is, I'm not trying to say quality is not important, but it is... Shows you where the emphasis is and what's important to clients. Clients, that's and right. We know the, and we know the client, and if you ask them, they would say it was a great experience. Yeah. And so they, I just they were to, happy with the product. So I just want to bring back, where, does, where why do we start talking about this? So going back to multi-project stories, yeah. it's about telling that story as to telling the why why this client is doing this particular project. Mm-hmm. And you might show a project that's nearly finished, a you project might. that is finished, a project that's halfway, a project that hasn't About even started. Start. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And I think that's important in terms of showing these little wins. Um, that's always important. And a big, big thing that we would help our builders, is, builders do is continually affirm their clientele. So let's say someone's in prelims in that design phase. It's not a done deal. You know, so you need to continually be providing confidence and these wins. And so that's showing them, hey, this is what you've got to look forward to. And that's keep, right. keep that excitement. That's right. Yeah. And that's exactly what this bias agent's done for me. Like, keep these wins up and, yeah. So I know I'm talking a lot about him at the moment, but it's just because I'm, I'm a, I was a client. Yeah, fresh. I'm a client at the moment. Yeah. And I'm, I'm experiencing it. What does it feel like to be a client? Mm. And it's still in the same line. Like, it's about a home. Mm. So this is very relevant for builders. Yeah, it's just the vehicle looks slightly different, but the outcome is still... 100%. You're still having your life transformed by having a new home. That's right. New space, yeah. A lot of builders feel like they attract the wrong clientele that only focus on price. They never seem to get the projects that they are truly passionate about and that are also profitable. Builders love working with us because we help them create an emotional connection with their ideal clients through the power of story and help them build long-term trust through their marketing system. If you're a builder and if you feel like you need help, book in a story strategy session with our team by visiting builderstorymarketing.com. Now back to this episode. Topic number three, and this is massive for builders. 
builders have to invest in their mindset mm. to back it up. Mm. And what I mean by back it up is back up the confidence. So if you are confident as a person, you can communicate confidence into your market and it will literally infect others. So a great example of this is you've been around someone that is like super negative, right? Mm. How do you feel? You feel like <laughs> oh man, <laughs> you almost get anxious. I know I, I do. And I don't, I don't want to be around that person, right? Yeah. So if you're a builder and that is you and that's what you're communicating every day, what mm. clients will literally go, man, I don't, I don't want to be around this. Yeah. And I think sometimes, again, it probably comes maybe due down to like what some builders have been exposed to, but it never really works long term. It's not sustainable going down the route of fear mongering or like, oh, you know, that builder and bad mouthing that. That's not sustainable it's not good long term and it's not going to give you it might take you from here to here or it might just or we'll just keep you there maybe not over the long term though it's not going to help you grow that's a it's a really key thing i see with a lot of our top performers is they do not bad mouth other builders 100 um, percent. but that mindset is really important really important because there's no point you, you can you know work with us and invest with us invest in your business in all sorts of ways you know you can get team members, new team members, you can get new vehicles, you can get everything rebranded, new website, you can invest in marketing, stories, all of that doesn't mean much and it's not going to go as far as it could go if, if, you're the mind, if you're the leader of the company, you're the one sailing the ship, the captain of the ship and you don't have a mindset. Man, that's that can, massive. That can, that can weather storms, that can um, navigate through the stars, you know. I think this is so big, like out of all our podcasts, like we've had heaps of topics within podcasts, like this is probably the most important topic. Like, yeah, obviously a lot of builder, like um, owners of the businesses, they listen to this, they watch this mm. and, um, you know, mindset is massive. And I mean, being in business, like Andre and I started this business back in 2011, mm. it's 2020, end of 2023 now. So it's almost been well, however many years that is. And man, there's ups and downs. Even in the best times, there's like massive problems and you got to like deal with it and it gets you down. Yeah. And um, it's something that I always have to remind myself on and, and that is to improve my mindset. So I've always invested in mindset, mm. like masterminds, books, really positive podcasts. What's a mastermind for those who aren't aware? What like, is a mastermind? Yeah, sometimes I come across builders and yeah. I might mention that and they have no idea what that is. So a mastermind isn't necessarily, necessarily a good thing. It's, it's a container of people, like-minded people that help each other. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have good people in the mastermind for it to be good. But it's, 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 um, most of the time, it's a collection of people that are like-minded, could be a bunch of builders at this typical kind of level, and they all bring each other up. Mm. They know what problems are happening. Obviously, we run a mastermind for some of our very select clients. Mm. Um, it's massive. The value you get from that as a person mm. is massive. But I guess, you know, one thing that I really try and focus on is how do I increase my mindset every single day? Yeah. It's like going to the gym, right? Big time. How do I increase my mental... How, where do I go for this mental gym every single day? Mm. And that might yeah. be having a routine to consume a particular piece of content. And we, we had a meeting yesterday, you and I, yeah. and we spoke about this. And it's really easy just to pick something up or open the podcast app and just click on the first thing. Mm. And it might be mindset, but it might not be relevant to you during this time. So I always suggest you have a look at like, what is your next goal? What is holding you back at the moment, right? It might be leadership. Mm. Or it might be around you've got some money mindset issues in your mind that is stopping you from going to that next level. So you've got to address those problems and that's where you need to invest. You need to invest in mindset, education, or whatever to fix some of those particular problems. Definitely. And then, yeah, not, not just listen to stuff for the sake of it. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, you've got to put it into action. That's always yeah. a big one. Yeah. Yeah. But that, yeah, mindset, I think where I would, I count us very fortunate and very blessed to talk to so many builders and have so many builders that we're working with at any given time and we can clearly see those who do work on their mindset you know i can in one day have multiple conversations with guys i know are investing in their mindset and the guys who aren't experiencing the same problems and how they just talk about the problem let alone how they deal with it is considerably different and the outcome then therefore is miles apart 100 percent. 
So, I mean, a, a few good books that I would love to quickly rattle off that might be worthwhile is one is The Obstacle is the Way. Just Google that. Uh, next one is, this one's a crazy one. Like, it, it's a bit woo-woo, <laughs> right? And at first, when I first picked it up, I was like, it's a bit cringy in a way. Yeah. And I don't know. I, I didn't like it at first. But since then, I've listened to it five times. So it's obviously good. It's called The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Ecker. Um, I think everyone deals with money issues in their mind. We've got these preconceived ideas, the way we've been brought up, you yeah. know, in, in, you know, in our families or whatever. And sometimes the thing that is holding us back is some money issues, mm -hmm. money mindset issues. So this one is something I've been battling with for quite a while because obviously I'm from South Africa um, South Africa, it's a very much, you're always in like survival mode, defense mode. You're always, look. you've got to look around. You've got to make sure no one attacks you from behind yeah, or whatever. It's always a hustle. Right? Yeah, it's a hustle yeah. and everyone's out there to get you and, and all that kind of stuff. Whereas Australia, it's completely different. So that's something that I've had to deal with. That's why I've listened to it like five times. I just finished it yesterday for the oh, fifth nice. time. Um, but yeah, just two books that I would highly suggest. Are there any any that you would suggest? Yeah, uh, one that comes to mind is "Take the Stairs," yeah, by Rory Vaden. That's a good one. That's really good. Um, that is really strong for the mindset around. Um, and it's funny. I recommend it to one of our builders, and now every time there is an opportunity for him to take, this is like the literal like phys physical, physical stairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah if yeah. there's an elevator or stairs, he takes a photo of the stairs, and he goes, <laughs> "Here I am doing it again, man. Thank you." Uh, yeah. But you look at his business and where it's gone. Yeah, you know, and it, it sounds silly, and the book doesn't talk about physically taking the stairs, but once you read it, you can't help not want to take the stairs. Yeah, it's rather almost than like the elevator. How you do one thing escalator. is how you do everything, right? Mm -hmm. And um, that's one thing I always value in you. Like you'd be walking, and then there'll be a piece of rubbish, and you'll go out of your way to pick up that rubbish, and I'm like, whoa, that's that's pretty cool. Um, I'm like, man that thing looks dirty. I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's one thing I value in you. And, and it's like, you know, how you do one thing is how you do everything. Mm. Um, so that's massive. I love that. That's a great book. I mean, it's very similar to Obstacle is the Way, but I suggest both. Yeah. I um, just due to chance, I think, I don't know how I think. Well, Andre, Andre recommended. Well, I think Andre mentioned Rory Vadden to me. Right. Another one of his books. And then I came across Take the Stairs and I was like, I like that. Um, title and I read that just after Obstacle is the Way so if you are going to consider reading either of those two books I would say read both of them and read Obstacle is the Way and then read Take the Stairs yeah. and reading them uh, one after the next is really powerful because yeah. they do support each other really well they are different but support each other well yeah and I think I just want to emphasize like why this is so important again again like if you can be that light if you can be that positive person that is like looking for opportunities instead of, you know, the negativity, mm -hmm. like what's all the stuff that's wrong, right? If you can be that person, you will become a better leader. Your team will look up to you. They'll get more done. They'll create more value for your clients, for your marketplace. And then also your clients will start seeing that. It'll, re it'll literally rub off on them and it'll make projects easier. Because instead of them seeing a problem as a problem, they'll see it as an opportunity mm. and you guys can just communicate it out or whatever. Mm. There's so many ways, so many stories I can talk about from like directly from our clients yeah. that have adopted this type of mindset, this sponge mindset for growth mindset. Yeah. yeah. I remember having, reading that book, the Obstacle is the Way, and I was just so, it was just so excited me that the concept and I started calling, you know, all of our builders and just having chats to them and talking about this topic with them. And one guy was like super pessimistic when I when he picked up the phone. And then we started talking. And then by the end of the call, he was like, "Man, you just I don't know what you just breathed into me, but yeah, confident. Yeah, all right. I'm, you know." And he's, he was talking about ideas that he had. And then a few months later, this was like during the peak COVID and stuff, a few months later, he had bought, imported, and had set up and started fabricating steel for steel frames. You know, so set up a second business that helps supply the steel frames that he needs to build and also supply other That's awesome. businesses. And I was like, damn, there you go. There's a problem. He lent into it and he found a solution. Yeah, most it. people were just, you know, complaining Complained. about prices yeah. going up. Yeah. yeah, that's massive. 
Yeah, so all th- all three of these topics are super important. Again, guys, you've got you've got to increase confidence in your market. Um, obviously, there are building like contracts that are falling over due to finance and all those kind of things. Look for the opportunity. Yeah. Just go sit down, put your phone away, and just start looking at where is the opportunity. 